Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm not in the workshop today because the weather is terrible and it was way too dark to film it here, even with all the spotlights on. This is part one of my Drosa build and it's about the base of the armor. Part two will be about detailing and part three will cover the paint job and attachments. I took the decision to present this as it happened. As a consequence, the build might sometimes evolve in weird directions or even go backwards. It was also built during quarantine, so I had some choices to make due to the lack of materials. I was originally basing the build on the most recent model, as I wanted to enter a cosplay contest and you need a reference picture for this here. I always feel like I'm wasting something when following a reference in a franchise such as 40k. You are supposed to paint your model like you want, or even green stuff the shit out of it. You aren't going to cosplay the basic ultramarine, it would be like portraying the default mod in Skyrim. In Drosa's case, as much as I love his current model, I was also interested in elements from older representations. Plus, it's a miniature, there are technical limitations and detail you cannot fit on it. So I started with a plastic model and progressively strayed away from it. I had to build the pieces in a particular order since I wasn't working with a reference picture. Some parts were going to determine the shape of other parts so they could all work together and have the right proportions. I was also working on other things at the same time, so the base of the armor alone ended up being a 12 days build. I started with a helmet, because it's a piece that can easily end up looking too large compared to the armor. I used my round helmet pattern. It's something I made at some point by wrapping my own head, the back, not my face, in plastic wrap and tape so I could use it as a base to make other patterns. Here I taped scraps of paper together until I got the shape I needed. There's a hole on top because I was still following the model at this point and that's where I wanted the polytail to go. If you want to see more paper scrap patterning, you can watch my Warframe video where I did a similar thing for a completely different outcome. I placed my seams where it was most convenient, following the main curves of the helmet. You can get the mask version of this template in my shop, by the way, I'll put a link in the description. I cut my pieces out of 5mm EVA foam and heat shaped them to make assembling easier. I cut some under bevels on the edges so the pieces could connect properly. I spread contact glue on the edges and worked on the faceplate while the solvent was evaporating. I was alternating between cutting and gluing, that's why I was still wearing a respirator in these shots. I assembled my pieces, I sanded some seams and... Wait! Where did the faceplate go? Oh, there it is. It looks like a pair of lady underwear. I said, let there be faceplate, and there was faceplate. Given how narrow the whole thing was, I had to make the faceplate removable in order to be able to put the helmet on. I used neodymium magnets, that's what I did for Valkyr, so go watch that video instead. And that's all for day one. After having a great debate with myself, I started by giving him a pair of horns. I made a pattern the lazy way, using aluminium foil. Look, I'm adding weird restriction marks to make you think I'm cool, but I never actually use them. After scaling my pattern up and transferring it to foam, I cut my under bevels with scissors this time for the sake of diversity. You might have noticed the difference in color between the foam I used earlier and that one. The black one is way softer than the grey one, and thus easier to shape. My first pair of horns was ready. I ended up making a second pair, smaller, which would curve around the main one. I kept the same aluminium horn, twisted it, and repeated the process. I pinned all the horns to the helmet to get an idea of the look. And that's all for day two. Day 3 was leg day. I chose to do something very basic shape-wise. For the shin guards, I started once again with a generic pattern based on the shape of my own body and altered it. 
each piece was made out of four parts. I'm not going to go through the whole underbevel heat shaping gluing process again, it will stay the same throughout the video. After assembling half of the sheen armor, I made a pattern for the five pieces. This time it was straight up freehanding. I grabbed some paper and drew my template. Then I went back to assembling the shins I had apparently abandoned, and then I went back to the fire armor. I wasn't jesting when I said I was going to present this in the exact order it happened. I wanted these pieces to have a fold in the middle, so I added undercuts at the back. I drew a knee armor at some point, but apparently forgot to film that part, so let's jump straight to the assembling. All my trousers might look similar, but if you look closely, you will notice that the paint stains have a different mapping. Oh, and this is something I do a lot. I tend to make the edges round, even on sharp looking armor like that one. There is this foot piece that just magically appeared. It's like the knee pad, but with a different shape. So in fact, it's not like the knee pad at all. And I'm wearing heels in order to gain a few centimeters. Eldar are more elongated than monkeys like me, so I needed to cheat on my body shape, especially with the armor making me look wider than I actually am. I will probably hide the hilt in some sabatons later. My main mistake here was to decide to wear boots underneath after patterning the shin guards, so now they are too small to close at the back. I have a way around it, you'll see that in part 2. Time to make back blades, trophy racks, veins, or whatever they are called. Once again, I grabbed some paper and drew something on it. I traced some runes onto foam through the paper pattern with a ballpoint pen to leave a slight dent into the soft material. After cutting them out, I rounded all the edges with a watery tool. I added a 12 volt LED strip and shimmery fabric to fill the runes. Someone asked if the lights were programmable. They aren't, it's a peasant LED strip. I want to add a fading animation. I do not have the required hardware right now, but it's something I'll be able to implement easily later. I had material limitations for that part, so I just made a larger version of my wing harness. There is a making of video where I actually explain what I did, but don't start making harnesses for a 5 meters wingspan out of Warbler. I used the bit of aluminum pipe I had left, split it in two, and stuck it inside the back blade. I could have added some steel wire to complete the armature and make it go along the full length. Given the structure of the back blade itself and the weight, it can hold on its own. Plus, it's my own costume for once, so I can always make changes if I need to. I made the plate on top removable with magnets to make it easier to store the armor. Now that I had my back blades, I could do placement tests and finish the harness. I put it on my own back before it had cooled down to finish shaping it. This is getting repetitive. I grabbed some paper and drew a simple flat chest plate. I might as well take advantage of my inexistent breasts. I don't have much to say here because it's not anything you haven't seen before. There is heat shaping, there are undercuts, there is sanding, there is paper scrap patterning. There isn't any footage. I just arranged my pieces so the front and back could work together and added some vents. I want to put a smoke machine and lights inside, but that will have to wait until the end of quarantine. I drew some digital tassets. And then I drew some physical tassets. I removed one of the abdominal plates in order to place the belt higher and make the torso shorter. I wanted to give him a back appendage akin to a scorpion tail, as a nod to the legend according to which Dwaza could have been the traitor phoenix lord of the striking scorpions. The idea evolved and it became a long string of armor plates instead. Long story short, I found the reconstitution of an Euryptid, also known as an extinct sea scorpion, and I thought it looked lovely, so I decided to stick one to Drazor's horse. This is a relatively accurate summary of what happened. I built the back plate I had drawn the day before. They are a bunch of overlapping flat pieces with undercuts. 
There I go, rounding up all the edges again. I hated them to flatten the curve. I temporarily assembled them with fabric scraps and hot glue for the sake of practicality. Then I stopped for at least five minutes to think about the kind of directions Bill was taking. I noticed a few things. My leg armor was too short. I needed the thigh armor to go higher and to modify the knee plates to make the shins seem longer. The middle of the body was a bit empty. Straps and the flayed skin of my enemies would help with that. But I also added, numerically, a sort of sleeveless tunic. The helmet was out of place, scale-wise, and there wasn't much I could do about it. The tip of my nose and back of my skull were already touching the helmet as it was. Arm and shoulder armor should help with that, but I started considering a hood. I expected to get so much shit for this, given that hoods are more of a harlequin or ranger accessory. So far, I haven't been called out for giving a hood to an incubus, which is a pleasant surprise. I now have a completely different idea for the helmets. You will probably see that in part 2. The four arm pieces were free-handed as well. It's the exact same thing as the leg armor but on a different limb. The elbow and knee pieces even use the same pattern with a different scale. I repeated the process for the shoulder armor. I drew a pattern, cut the pieces out of foam, assembled them, and did some sanding on the edges. For the second one, I scaled the pattern up and altered it. I cut out a part of the pauldron and glued it higher than the rest to create some depth. I quickly assembled the tunic using fabric I had left from another project. I didn't film the pattern in process, but it was free-handed again, so there wasn't really anything to see. I tried everything on, in order to make a mental list of everything that was wrong with it. As I said at some point, I have new ideas, and the shape of some parts will probably be modified as a consequence. And that's all for part one. See you in a few weeks, or a few months, for part two, which will be about details. Thanks for watching.